So I absolutely do have to buy something I can drive home in today now, and I have no option. I'm interested to see what James' bidding technique is going to be. You know, we've got the, the head nod, the hand up, the, the wave. I'm going to get bidding mad. And this, people, is why you check the MOT histories oh. before you buy a car. Did you spot that, did you? Yeah. Oh, nice. Right, let's go out here, Toby. My winner is coming through. We've got to make sure we buy it. The rules have changed. The goalpost has moved. You're going to have to buy a car off me in the car park at this rate. No, I just got one, mate. What'd you get? I got the winner. I got the micro. You didn't. 1,500 clip out. Oh, oh, no, hang on. So, oh, what's yours? Engine operation has got an exhalation mark on it. Ticks across the board. Ticks across the board. Right, hello everyone, welcome back. You join me in our green recovery truck this morning. We've got Macaulay in front of us with our black recovery truck with the trailer because we're on our way to Aston Barkley Westbury. I was there a couple of days ago with James of Chops Garage. We both bought three cars, we both drove a car home, so we've both got two cars there left to collect. I'm going to put one on the back of this truck and Toby, who's on the camera, is going to drive the other one back and then Macaulay is going to load up James's and take them down to Devon for him. Well, he's in North Devon, so it's kind of across to Devon for him. Uh, we've got a little bit of a competition going on who's bought the best car for under £5,000. It's going to be interesting getting mine loaded up, the little Nissan Micra, because after I bought it and I was quite smugly gloating about how little I'd paid for it, I realised that on there it does have warnings about the gearbox and things like that. So comment down this, below. This oh no, hang on. So Oh, what's yours? Engine operation has got an exhalation mark on it. Oh. It'd be interesting if it actually goes into gear or not. I mean, they drove it through the auction hall, but maybe it, maybe it crunches, maybe it's got a whine. I don't know, this is what we're going to find out. And then maybe we'll just sabotage James's car so he can't win. It's only about an hour and a quarter from here, so not far at all. Uh, my back's already starting to hurt from driving this truck and not having a comfortable seat position, but we'll figure it out. Uh, I guess we'll see you when we get there and we check out these cars that we've got. We got it in. Is it going to fire up? Oh, no. I don't know if my micro is going to fire up. I think it said it needed a jump pack. Um, got jump Lovely. Right, I'll get my micro then. That's going on the trailer. Uh, I'll just see if it starts. It, it's unlocked, so. No worries. All right, let's get this radio turned down. That's that one. Right, so this one, A, said it had these warnings. You can just about see from the inside here. Warnings that battery wasn't very good. Well, it's just started, all right? I think it said something about not running. Well, maybe, but it seems to be all right. And then it was gearbox, first and, neut first and reverse selection. So is it gonna crunch? No, it's gone in fine. There's nothing behind us, can I reverse? Okay, so our clutch is very high. Most likely gonna be slipping, to be fair. Yeah, that's uh, the clutches. That's the, my foot completely off the clutch. And it is barely moving. Now this might have I would say it might have some adjustment in it, but I expect if I put my foot down now, it will slip it up into second. Oh yeah. That clutch is slipping like crazy. That does not bode well for my chances in this competition, to be honest. The one car where I didn't ask the driver 
that was the clutch and they would have told me it's slipping or it's very high at least which probably would have put me off hey ho So, yes, clutch slipping. I wonder what it looks like underneath. Actually, it looks really clean. The exhaust is tidy. Macaulay has told me that James's Fiat 500 here, it's got the nice red leather interior and all that sort of stuff, but no power steering. They're a bit crunchy going into, uh... oh yeah. Where is it? There's nothing on that. And what's the gear selection like? That's okay. That's alright. No. There. No. That's okay. But yeah, unfortunately for James, he's got no power steering, but I know what would cheer him up. Shifting metal air freshener in his car. Free of charge, compliments of Joe. That'll do the trick. James' Fiat 500 has got no power steering. Mine's got a got knacker clutch. So, you know, we're still competing. You just get your Bluetooth set up, are you? Uh, I'm trying to see if the sat nav works. So there's no SD card. Ah, it might be in the paperwork that's back at the garage. Looks like it, doesn't it? It's a techno, so it should have it's got cameras all around. Have you managed to pop the windows, wing mirrors out yet? Oh uh, yeah, they do it when you start it up. Ah, okay. And then you should be able to put, is there a button on there for like cameras? Oh yeah. So you can do that and you get like a 360 I'm picture up. around the thing, you should do. Oh, there you are. Oh. So yeah, what have we got? Sides and reverse. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, put the 360 thing. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's quite nice. Yeah. Straight. That way a little bit, that's it, straight. A little bit that way. Perfect. Here we are at CJ Cars, Chopper's Garage. Both unloaded that. Just gonna get them unloaded now. Nice, lovely journey. Just got the uh, Suzuki Swift unloaded. A little bit of a knock actually. I thought it was okay, but there is a bit of a front left hand knock. I thought that was a really good one. But here we are. Got the 500, just about to unload it now. Trailer's all unloaded there. Just finished unloading them. Got the Suzuki here. Just over there, you can just see. 500. All right, so here is our micro. It's now that it's clutch done. Still got Aston Barkley sticker on it. Let's get that off. I got some new wheel trims on the way. Uh, it's had its PDI. It's been serviced like a week ago. I need to remember to buy some mats actually because that's looking a bit grubby. Uh, yeah, it was serviced like a thousand miles ago. It's got full Honda Wilson's history really really nice history it just needs a good valet um just a bit grubby in here but I mean, it's not bad it's just it just needs a clean up i mean 
the scuzz and whatever in there. Um, drives absolutely lovely, but we are very busy. So I'm gonna take it down to the hand car wash. So this is my first proper drive of this, because I didn't drive this back, obviously. A bit of a squeaky front shock, so I have to look at that as well now. A bit of a weird noise that that might just be like a I don't know, a bit of a squeaky top mount or something. But anyway, I get the guys to look at that. Obviously, we've done the clutch. I want to get some mats for it. I've spent a few quid on some nice Nissan wheel trims as well. I'm going to get it cleaned first because they haven't arrived yet. And by the time James is ready to list his car, I want this to be ready to go as the winning car it's looking as nice as possible so i'll see you when we pick it up and we've got mats i'm just looking incredibly the passenger side carpet looks immaculate like it's never been stepped on literally factory fresh obviously our driver side has been quite hammered so this has been a one person car the vast majority of its life i think but yeah we'll pop the proper job and try and get some cheap mats to uh, freshen it up a little bit and as i say i'll see you when it's cleaned can't really say that I've got my 25 quid to earth today because there's still smegums in here but they have got I guess well yeah irritating really isn't it I haven't even got the paint off of the, uh, the thing here but I mean Yes, it was only a quick hand car wash type thing for 25 quid, but it wasn't that bad other than some grime. So if they could have concentrated on that, still crap on that seat by there. So I feel like I'm gonna have to do this again anyway. Hmm. Right, so we're now back. We finished up everything on the car. It's a couple of days later. Um, I was kind of waiting on James really to pull his finger out and get a car ready. He has now sent me a lovely encouraging video saying that his car's ready to go and mine's rubbish, etc. I'm sure Toby will put that here. Right, Joe, my pictures have been done, my video's been done, my car is all ready to go up for sale. So it's time for you to list that revolting Nissan Micro we got and may the best man win. So I'm gonna pull it out. Let's have a look around it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the history. Uh, we'll do a quick vehicle score check on it. And then it's a case of waiting until we get buyers uh, to see who actually wins this competition. So let's have a look and look at the winner. And then we'll talk about James's rubbish. Right, so there, as you can see, we've got the price board on it already, 3495. We're ready to rock and roll with this bad boy. Got new number plates on it. I got some aftermarket wheel trims. I've to sit in the office actually and talk about what we've spent on getting this to where we are and what that means about our potential profits. Because if we look at James's video, I'll be able to put that a little clip into that. He's got three cars, doesn't he? And he's going through and trying to figure out, he's put them on a spreadsheet, which one's going to make him the most profit. He just seems to just make up the rules however he wants, but we're stuck with one car. So we'll We'll get our figures worked out and figure out how much we might be able to make. The only downside really I can see is we've got these few marks on the door here. Um, but it's the only real detractor, as I say, got some nice new wheel trims on it. We could probably touch in that little bit of silver on there, but uh, other than that, it's pretty damn straight. I was going to take these roof rails off, but it looks like you need a special key, which doesn't seem like we've got, which is a bit of a shame. But it's looking a bit cleaner inside now, and I've put in my floor mats as well, because you might remember that front carpet was a bit rubbish, wasn't it? The passenger side looked like factory fresh, and the other side was not so great. So I've got a set of these, they're like six quid from Proper Job, I think, which is our local DIY store. And what else? We had to put new wipers on it, because they were pretty rubbish, and I can't think what else. It's absolutely freezing out here, so let's hop in the car, and I'll show you the incredible service history on this thing. So, we've got our V5, we've got two keys, uh, what have we got here? This looks like paperwork for what we've done. Oh yeah, we had to replace the clutch, didn't we? So yeah, it's been a little while, I've forgotten. 
So we've got a new clutch in. I've got all the prices for that inside. No previous owners on this car, or one owner car. And let's have a look at the service history. Typical type of micro customer this. We have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, all Nissan main dealer stamps. And it was last done at 69,326. Uh, in the 24th of the 8th, 23, was its last service. It's only on 71,800 now, so uh, it's done 2,500 miles, something like that. So that's not needed to be done. And it's so nice that it's all Nissan. What else can I tell you? We've probably already talked about all this, but you know, Bluetooth, all that sort of stuff. Drives absolutely spot on now, clutch is really good. So, yeah, I think we're in with a good chance, but the proof will be in the pudding. We need to go inside, run the figures, and see how that stacks up against James's many options that he's using. So, I'll see you in there. Right, before we get into the figures of what I spent, I've got some of my invoices here. Uh, does that include our clutch? No, it doesn't. Um, we'll look at that in a minute. I've got James's potential profits in front of me, but I want to do a vehicle score on this car as well. Just, you know, I feel like it should be a really good one. So, Alpha Foxtrot 62, Lima Whiskey Delta. Should be good, come on. 587 out of 999. Bad bits, over 10 comments on recent MTs, vehicle is over 10 years old. Some of that you can't. Should we have a look at the vehicle performance? See how many brake horsepower this beast has got. How many do you reckon, Toby? Um, 80? Very close, 78 brake horsepower. All things we can see here through the uh, website. We can see our vehicle score, we can see future estimates. We can see uh, past paid reports if they're over 20 days old. There's an AI mechanic, should we want to figure out like, why is my car revving up but it's not moving very fast? It would have told us that the clutch was slipping, which of course we had to do. And then if you were going to hand over your money, you need to do a proper vehicle history check. And vehicle score, I've got you covered. You can do that ultimate plus port for just £11.97. Don't forget to use my code shifting metal 20 and make it just £9.58. Right, so we paid £86.40 plus VAT for the clutch, but we won't include VAT because we won't be paying it or we'll be claiming it back. It needed uh, boot gas struts by the looks of it. So we had two of those, which came to a total of 47 pounds, 10 pence. Bloody hell. That could be the difference between winning and losing. Then it seems like we replaced every single wiper blade on the car as well. But luckily that only came to 15 pounds and 65 pence. Then labor, uh, who did this? Steph did this in the space of about four or five hours. Um, of an afternoon, basically. So to me, including the other bits, if we said 200 pounds labor, I think that's fair, because he did do a PDI as well and probably looked at the fluids and whatever. Wheel trims, I paid 29.95 for those. Floor mat, I'm forgetting how much I spent on this bloody thing. Mats was, I think they were 6.99. Certainly weren't any more than that. They might have been five ninety nine, but if I am, I'm mugging myself off for a quid. And then I paid for a valet on it, didn't I? Twenty five pounds. I, I definitely got mugged off on. And then the car to start off with. I'm gonna have to have a look at the emails that I sent to James to dig out the old prices on those. There it is, Micra. It was fifteen hundred pounds plus. £292.39 in buyer's fee and £35 of the assured by the A report, but £7 of that. Oh no, that's not, yeah, then plus £7 of VAT. So we'll ignore the VAT. So the car was £1,500 plus £292.39 plus £35 for having done a check on it. And I think we are going to get and we'll stick firm to 3495. Let me get the calculator out. Let's see how much we've got. Now saying that, I, we, if you haven't seen James's video already, I'll put a link in the description below. He kind of did a bit of filming from his day there, used some of the footage that we used as well, and then he's gone through the three cars that he's bought and the prices. So the Jazz, he reckons he can kind of net uh, 869 after the VAT. 
the Swift, which is the one he's decided he is going to go with, 1,283, and the Fiat 500, 885 and 35 pence. So, £1,283 after VAT and everything is taken out. So that's what we need to be. We could be dead in the water, who knows, so. 1,500 plus 292, 39, plus 35, plus 25, plus 699, plus 29, 95, plus 200, plus 1565, plus 47 pounds, 10, plus 86, 40. That's 485 pounds and nine pence, apparently. Definitely got that wrong. This is why I need a spreadsheet like James has got. He's far more organized. Our total spend is 2,238 pounds and 48 pence which gives us a margin of £1,261.52. We are going to need to work out our VAT cost, which would be 3495 plus what we spent on it, which was 17.9239, also minus the 35. So our margin was 1,667 and 61 pence. That's the difference between the actual purchase and the sale. Regardless of what we spent in the middle, that's what we have to pay our VAT on. Now I can't remember exactly what the amount is because the accountant does it all for me. So VAT margin, 16.67%. So times 16.67% is 200 and 77 pounds and 90, well, that's 278 pounds basically is what we're going to give to give to the vat man 1,261 52 minus 278 pounds would give us a potential net profit of 983 pounds and 52 pence potentially not as good as his swift but have you seen his swift have you seen the back bumper on it yes he's put some outro on there and he's put it up for 5995 but any self-respecting customer is going to want that done, and if then he's going to probably have to spend a few hundred quid on doing that. So maybe they're just going to knock him down. Maybe he's going to have to discount it. I can see James doing that. Someone coming along and saying, "I see you've put some some outro on there, but I'd really like it painted. Would you do that?" Perhaps I don't know if we put it in our video. All those swift things that he had in the pockets. Maybe that'll put them off. Who knows? Yeah, we might still be in with a chance. We're we're looking around about a grand out of this if we're lucky, um, and we'll have to see what James does. But it's just a waiting game now, isn't it? We've got to sit around, wait on them, do the viewings, and see what happens. So um, he's got his life. We'll get ours life on the advertising now. And if you want an incredible Micra, come see me. If you want a dog rough Suzuki Swift, then uh, James's link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Whether we'll do a video update on this, or we'll include it in another video, or we'll put it on Instagram, it might well be on Instagram or something like that. So make sure you follow me on Instagram, shifting underscore metal. And other than that, we will see you in the next video. Wish me luck.